Hi guys, welcome back to another video in the Poland series. Today we're doing another video on interesting facts that you didn't know about Poland. Um, let's get into it. Yeah. Poland, a country rich and steeped in history, home to over 39 million people with a... Tr so South Africa has a population of 60 million people. So 39 million is roughly two thirds of yeah. the population. Tricky language for outsiders to learn, has breathtaking scenery and some truly idyllic old towns. The country prides itself on preserving its culture and heritage. If you're traveling to Poland in the near future, here are the 22 interesting facts. They said that the language is tricky, but many people that we have spoken to and drop down in the comments below have said that Poland and the language is actually not that difficult to speak because the Alphabet is the exact way that the words are pronounced. So if you actually learn the alphabet and you learn the pronunciation of, of the various letters, it's actually not a very hard language to speak. And if you also learn to speak Poland, Polish, uh, Polish <laughs> you will be able to speak a lot of the languages in the surrounding countries because it's very similar in its trait and the way it's pronounced. Absolutely. Mm. It's about Poland that most people don't know. Hi, welcome to Daily Explore your channel where to discover and explore the world. 1. Poland is the ninth largest country in Europe. Poland isn't a small country, it's the ninth biggest country in Europe and the 63rd in the world. Pol I think many people take it for granted how big Poland actually is as a country and how much land they actually cover. Like in one of the previous videos, you could see how diverse the landscapes were from mountains to oceans to sand dunes to rivers to lakes so i mean it's a pretty diverse landscape and it's got a very big significant chunk of you know the european union in terms of the land space that it occupies poland is bigger than italy and the uk two the name poland polska has a meaning it originates from the name of the tribe polany which means people living in open fields three i'd love to know when you refer to Poland as Poland or Polska. Like I see some people say Polska and I see others say Poland. So obviously Polska means people residing in fields, but when do you use it? Yeah, is there like a specific, you know, occasion or time when you refer to Poland as Polska or is it just really up to the person? The person. Yeah, uh, let us know, but it would be interesting to know. Absolutely. Vodka originated in Poland. Russian readers will cringe at the thought that vodka may not have been invented in Russia, but instead originated in Poland. I I really thought that vodka was Russian, especially because you get that big brand called Russian Bear. I always thought that vodka was a Russian drink. Like, uh, you, you just see it everywhere, but it's crazy to think that it was invented or made for the first time in Poland, and I don't think many people actually know that. The Polish friends that I have, they don't pre-mix um, their vodka with anything. They drink it clean, like just straight. I, I, I can't It's like, I can't it's do that. like in drenched, I think, in Polish culture. Interesting. The world's first written mention of the drink and of the word vodka was in 1405 Poland from Acta Grodzki Recorder of Deeds in the court documents from the Palatinate of Sandomierz in Poland. The spirit has been produced since the early Middle Ages. Four. Poland's constitution was the second in the world. Poland adopted its first written constitution in the spring of 1791, which was the second in the world valid legal document of the kind. It's crazy to think that the second ever constitution that was written came out of Poland. But you wouldn't say, there's so many other countries around the world, you'd never say that the second ever constitution of its kind originated out of Poland. Yeah, I wouldn't have said so. However, it was only in effect for only 14 months and three weeks before Poland was in partitions for over 100 years. 5. Polish engineer invented the modern kerosene lamp. In 1853, Ignacy Lukasiewicz introduced the first modern street lamp in Europe. His lamp inventions were, however, first used in Lviv in Ukraine. There is still a street in Warsaw that uses the same street lamps until today. Those lamps obviously are not used 
in today's day and age, but many years ago, that was like a significant part of how you kept your house lit up in the dark and people would walk around and in the streets. So, so we have vodka and we have street lamps. Let's see what else Poland uh, created. Six. During the World War II, Warsaw was almost completely destroyed. The old town that you can see in Warsaw isn't the actual old town from before the war. The original has been completely bombed at in the 40s, and Poles rebuilt it after the war. Using so, they said in the comments below in one of our previous videos that over like 90%, 85% I think of Warsaw was completely bombed in World War II and that like hardly anything remained and they actually relied on some Italian guy thinks paintings to rebuild it. I mean, like that's crazy. Like they didn't have, know. they didn't even have photographers back in the day because cameras, I don't even think were invented at that stage. So they relied on paintings to rebuild like a city. I, I don't, I can't fathom how you look at a painting and then work off that, like to, to build, rebuild a city. It's, it's crazy to think and you admire them so much of how much they wanted to just get their black like, city looking to what it used to look like. And they rebuilt it. And I think the old town in Warsaw is one of the most beautiful parts of the city. And uh, it's been pretty well preserved since I think it was the 40s or 50s when they rebuilt it. Really well done to them for that. The old town is definitely somewhere that we want to go in Warsaw. We've heard a lot of cool stories about it and uh, a lot of amazing places to visit in the city itself. So it will be definitely somewhere that we visit in the near future. Using Bernardo Bellotto's detailed paintings. That's oh, why it now Bernardo. looks as it did in the 14th century, rather than the 20th. Very Seven. Marie Curie was actually Polish. Marie Curie, the woman who discovered radium and polonium, wasn't French, but rather a Polish. Her name was Marie Sklodowska before she married a Frenchman named Pierre Curie. She was the first woman to win a Nobel Prize, the first person and only woman to win twice, the only person to win a Nobel Prize in two different sciences. 8. Poland So they have Nobel Peace Prize winners as well. And I think I'm not mistaken, she's not the only one. I think she was just the first female. Yeah, and the only female to win it twice. Twice. The Nobel Prize, yeah. That's, that's, that's crazy. Poland has a very diverse nature. Poland has beaches, mountains, forests, deserts, and lakes. Almost 800 kilometers of the seashore and a few mountain chains, Tatra, Carpathian, suited Bieszczady and Zwy Tokryski. Poland also has the only Central European desert, Pustynia BB Doska. There are also dunes in the Pomerania region that are a curiosity on a European scale. So are wetlands. I thought in the previous video that South Africa was like a very diverse like country in terms of the landscapes but only you know once you watch these videos do you actually realize that poland is just as diverse absolutely we we always boast about the diverse you know terrains in south africa and the beautiful nature and the stunning scenery that you find in south africa and i i never knew or thought that you could find basically everything that we have back home in poland and it, I find it so unique and absolutely like many people don't, breathtaking. Many people don't know, I think, of just how beautiful and how diverse their landscape actually is. And it's crazy to think that you can do just about anything that you want and there is a place for it in Poland and you don't have to leave your country. I think the biggest thing people said was is it just gets cold. Like that's the biggest defector. In the winter time, the weather is not the greatest and it can deter people from, you know, visiting all these places because it's very cloudy and rainy. But I mean, throughout the year or the rest of the year, it's pretty good weather all year round. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, it's, it's definitely something amazing and it's awesome to see. Lands in Bibritsky National Park and islands in Wolitsky National Park. Nine. Traditional Polish last names change depending on the gender. Names that ends with ski, ska, or kakai works I like adjectives and needs to match the gender. So, if your father's name is Kowalski, if you're a female, you'll be called Kowalska. Not only in gender, but. So, 
where we're from South Africa, obviously we speak English and then my home language is Afrikaans. And neither of the two languages have any change in the word dependent on gender. We, th that just does not exist for us. And it was something that we also found out when we moved to Germany that some words change dependent on the gender, for, exa for example, like a table or, or something can be male and female. We still don't know really like what- We're still learning. If we're still learning. But I've never heard of names, ch like last names changing dependent on the gender. You can basically read someone's surname by the sounds of it off paper and know if they are a male or a female dependent on their surname. Like that's crazy. It's very cool. It is cool. But Polish last names also changes depends on the marital status. 10. Europe's heaviest animals in Poland. The 380,000 acre, 150,000 hectare, Bialoiza forest, the primeval forest in Poland is Europe's last ancient forest and home to 800 European bison, Europe's heaviest land animals. The you would never say that Poland also has beautiful, like, creatures, like, animals that roam just like the earth in obviously closed uh, parks and all that. But I mean, I didn't know that they had bison. bison. And it's actually sad to see they only got like 800 left. Obviously, they were hunted uh, back in the day. Uh, I have seen photos of old school hunting in Europe where a lot of these animals were hunted for food and for meat. But um, I didn't know that uh, they had this in Poland. I think now that we know that there is such a diverse like landscape and terrain, I'm I'm sure that like now I won't or we we can't really be shocked about it now because there's yeah. basically a place to live for every type of animal that you can think of. You know, what, the ones that can survive the winter. I wonder what other animals they also have. It'd be interesting to see some like probably an, deer. Yeah, and... animals that you don't find commonly like around. Eleven. Poland had the world's first upside-down house. The Polish village of Simbark only has about 500 residents, yet it still manages to be a magnet for tourists, because back in 2007, cool. it unveiled the world's first upside-down house that was open to the public. For me, the crazy thing is, is I saw something like this when we were in the Netherlands, and I thought this was unique, and I thought it was something that the Dutch had came up with, but it's crazy that it's was first in Poland and then probably the world took the idea and then like incorporated it in various places around the world in their countries. Yeah. But it almost looks like it can be like a boat, you know? At the bottom. I don't see a boat. <laughs> Not the top, but okay. This wooden building, the wrong way up in a pleasant forest setting, attracted worldwide media attention and somehow started a craze for all things upside down. Twelve. Poland. He said it started a craze for all thing. things upside down. So obviously other countries picked up on the trend what Poland had or done first and then they just copied it. Also has the world's biggest castle. Poland has an impressive 16 world heritage sites and among them the biggest castle in the world, Malburg. The castle was built by the Teutonic Order we after the conquest of Old Prussia. Other video. Its main purpose was to strengthen their own control of the area, following the Order's 1274 suppression of the Great Prussian Uprising of the Baltic tribes. I don't think, though, that the castle is the biggest. I think it's biggest by land area, to my knowledge. Like, it's the biggest land area that it occupies, making it the biggest castle. Okay, yeah, but not the biggest building, by size. Not the biggest building sites, yeah. the biggest like land sites. So d just a question, did that castle also get destroyed during World War II? I can't remember. I think in the previous video, majority, well, not majority of it, but a good portion of it was destroyed or bombed Damage. and then they rebuilt it and restored it to its natural look. Oh, pizza. 13. Poland pizza. In Poland, pizza bases are not topped with Napolitana or a tomato-based sauce. Firstly, I didn't know that Poland actually has pizza. What do you think they had? I didn't think that it was like it was a thing in Poland. Obviously, you get like Domino's, I assume, in there, but I didn't know that they do their own unique take on a pizza with no tomato sauce. I mean, I'm going to be dead honest with you. I've never 
except for a focaccia, which is basically just a base with olive oil, garlic, rosemary. I've never eaten a pizza that does not have some form of a tomato base. I don't but, know about you. But not, yeah, tomato, tomato paste or tomato puree is like a, I think it's like a standard for like a, a pizza. So it's, I think it'd be interesting to taste a pizza that doesn't have that as a base because that's like standard on like 99% of pizzas, I think. These are generally served separately and resemble what we would consider to be ketchup. 14. Kissing woman's hand is still in fashion in Poland. So this was also covered in one of the previous videos that we did about facts about Poland. But a lot of people said that they don't practice this anymore amongst the younger generation. Like it's mainly the older generation that still practices and it's like a dying out. Uh, yeah, tradition. Tradition. But so I would love to know if you take a girl on a date or a lady on a date, would you greet her by kissing her hand or how would you go about greeting her, like the younger generation? Is this still something that your father does with your mother? Um, yeah, when when is this still practiced? That's something that I would love to know because as James mentioned, a lot of you said in the previous video that this is not really something that happens anymore. So if it does happen, when does it happen? I think it's more traditional. Polish men generally still tend to observe the chivalry protocol. Don't be surprised if you see this upon the first introduction between total strangers. 15. Poland has its own version of Thai Songkran. If you're heading to Poland for Easter, prepare to get wet. Easter Monday is known as Smigus Dingus when everyone is chasing one another with water guns and buckets. Traditionally, boys throw water over girls and spank them with pussy willow branches, and the girls fight back. So, I must just say something. If I had to visit Poland and I had to, or happened to be there during Easter weekend, and someone threw a bucket of water over me and I had no idea about, idea about the tradition, I would be pretty shocked and offended, I'm not going to lie. Like, Well, it's a good thing that if we do go on Easter Monday, that we know that we might get thrown with a bucket of cold water. Yeah, okay, I'm glad, I, I'm glad to know. It's a weird tradition, like why? I would love to know what the backstory is behind it and why they actually throw water at you. It's a bit weird, but I don't know, it's obviously traditional and it's obviously Different. something that they do, so it's pretty cool to see though. 16. Poles celebrate a name day. In addition to birthdays, Poles celebrate their name day or in the enemy, which is the day commemorating the saint they are named after. The names associated with each day is listed in all calendars in Poland, so the name day is often more important than a birthday because... So does that mean that you have two birthdays? You get presents on your birthday and your name day? And you just mentioned that the name day is like almost more important than your birthday. I'd like to know though, like what happens if your name is not in the calendar? Like, what if you've got such a unique name and it's not in the calendar? Then when do you celebrate your name day? Mm, you're going very technical. You probably have to choose a day. I don't know. You I'd, change your name. I'd love to know <laughs> what happens if you have a specific name and it's not in the calendar. Do you then choose your name day? Because everyone remembers about it. 17. Polish TV is dubbed by one man. If you're planning on watching some foreign movies on TV in Poland, you might want to reconsider. Foreign movies and series are dubbed, but not by Polish actors, but a single man reading parts of everyone, including women what? and children. 18. I'd love to know how that works. Like, imagine watching an Avengers movie where there's like 40 different cast members and every single character has the same voiceover from the same guy. Okay, so I understand that he said when you watch it on TV, but does this apply at the cinemas, like the movie house? Is it also still one guy or can you go and watch the original version with the English and their own voices? I think you can probably watch the original. I think what they're saying is that when they are dubbed into Polish, from the English to Polish, then... It yeah. changes. So basically... And what if the movie is dubbed in Polish and it's at the movie house? Is it still 
Well, it sounds like it's the same guy. I don't know. Drop down in the comments below what 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 goes on there, because if it's the same person, it's probably we can get very like you need to monotone. monotone. And also, how busy is that guy? If he has to do every single series <laughs> and movie, he must have a very cool voice. Poland houses an original Gutenberg Bible. The little town of Pelplin in Poland's Kosuje region houses an original Gutenberg Bible. It is one of only nine copies of the Gutenberg Bible that survive in their original 15th century binding, and you can see it for real in a glass case inside the town's diocesan museum. 19. What's awesome is that how Poland people, they preserve their traditions and they preserve their culture, and more importantly, they preserve their religious beliefs. And we've seen that across multiple videos and We've also heard it from multiple people as well. And it's nice to see that they're not influenceable by the rest of the world and they stick to what they believe in and they stick to it. And I think many people, that's why they love Poland so much is because they are like that. Yeah. They stick to what they believe in and they're not influenced. Mushrooming is a popular family activity in Poland. Going to the forest to pick Mushrooming. wild mushrooms at the end of the summer is a popular activity for many people in Poland. Kids are taught how to distinguish an edible mushroom from a poisonous one early on. As I was just thinking that, no, like, as a kid growing up, I was told, don't ever touch or even let alone eat a mushroom if it's like just growing in the field because... Unless you buy it from the supermarket, you don't touch it, you don't eat it. You don't touch a mushroom growing in the field just because you can... You don't know how to distinguish if it's edible or if it's poisonous. And many uh, mushrooms that I know of can make you very sick if you eat them. So it's obviously a skill and an art almost to distinguish between what is a edible mushroom versus what is poisonous and can actually make you sick. But I wonder, is there, for all the Polish here doing mushrooming as a family activity, is there a certain way to easily distinguish between a mushroom that's poisonous and a mushroom that's edible? Because, I mean, if I'm just looking at this picture now, I wouldn't even say that's a mushroom. Like, it doesn't look like... <laughs> it looks, like a, looks like a nut. But I don't know. That's the crazy thing, like... Perhaps you also get a lot of different, more different types of mushrooms growing in Poland that you can eat. I would love to know how hard it is to distinguish between the mushrooms. Like, is there a distinct difference between poisonous and edible ones? Because like, what if it, what if like the differences are so minimal that you battle to see it and then you end up picking a poisonous one and like someone getting sick or dying? Like, that's pretty... Scary. So please let us know if there is some way to distinguish so that we don't visit Poland and pick the wrong mushrooms. I don't think I'm going to Poland to scavenge and scavenge for mushrooms. I think we should. It sounds fun. 20. Pimikas with Nika Restaurant. Located in Rockpaw, the Pimikas with Nika is the oldest restaurant in Europe, open since 1275. And until today, what? it is still open. That's like 800 years. 1275. Imagine being like, it's probably like passed down in generations of family or something. Like, but 800 years is like a very long time. Do you know what all that restaurant survived? Multiple wars, multiple plagues, and they're still there. I want to know who constructed that thing. I mean, it's good on them. Stood the test of time. Come Absolutely. <laughs> Open and serving. 21. Latex condoms were invented by a Pole. First latex condom was invented in 1912 I by Julius Fromm, who made the rubber ones thinner and better. Ironically, until these dates politicians in Poland are arguing about which methods of anti-conception should be allowed, if any at all. So we've got lights that they invented, we've got condoms, and we've got vodka. vodka. That is like, uh, sounds like a party. <laughs> 22. Poland has its own version of Valentine's Day. Did you know? Oh yeah, don't forget two birthdays and uh, apparently two Valentine's Days. It sounds like the whole year is just a party and like celebration. celebration. 
Like imagine having your birthday twice and then celebrating Valentine's Day twice. No, I could do that. I could really do that. Know that Poland had their own Valentine's Day since the medieval period? It takes place around 2124 of June, and it is called Nox Y Tohidska, St. John Z. Wow. Sabatka or Nox Kupabi, Kupabas. So, just a question, do you, the, the Polish, do they still celebrate Valentine's Day on the 14th of February, or does this kind of replace that one? What is the differences as well? Because this one looks more like, festive and vibey and you look like you celebrated in like a group of people whereas the traditional valentine's day is just with your partner you buy chocolate you buy roses looks looks pretty amazing i mean Maybe i mean it, it we is. just saw people in the water now they're letting lamps off it looks pretty cool it looks different so what are the differences between the two valentine's days of his night men jump over bonfires and women hope for wreaths According to the Slavic tradition, people were meant to find their better halves. There you go, 22 interesting facts about Poland that most people don't know. Well, I definitely knew a few of those because we've been doing a lot of videos on Poland and getting to know the country a bit better, but I think the majority of them, probably like 18, 19 of those facts, I don't know. So I think our knowledge is definitely getting a lot better definitely expanding and like i feel every time i watch one of these videos about Poland, there's something that just blows my mind like completely for me it's just crazy to think that so many things that we use in our everyday lives um have come out of poland and such monumental things and stuff that's happened in history you know originated out of poland and also that kind of makes me feel like how did i not know this you know how how is the world so shut off to poland like why is this the first time that i hear about these things I would... and i feel maybe this is us with a lot of countries you know i think there's many countries that we don't know a lot about and i think it's just your teaching as a kid when you are brought up and what schooling they decide to teach kids and obviously the western world but we're not from the western world we're from the southern tip of africa are a bit different in what they teach and we learn more about African stuff and stuff that you would not necessarily say or classify as important. But I mean it's interesting to see and I think this is definitely not the last uh, fact video that we will do of Poland. I think there are many more. If there are any videos that you would recommend for us to watch to get to know your country a bit better, please drop it down in the comments below. I think this is us for this video so if you enjoyed it please smash that like button and subscribe to our channel so that you do not miss any of our latest videos and also please do remember to let us know about those mushrooms and the valentine's day and the whole easter celebration those questions that we have i'm really intrigued and i would really love to know you know what the answers are to those questions so now you read every single one of the comments so we will rest assured that we will get to every single one of them. This is us for this video. So uh, beyond borders. Over and out.